Hey everyone, this is Manly Badass Drew, and welcome back to the letter. Previously, Ash's route began, which was an intro that basically involved self-doubt and misunderstandings. The drive to BRC is a quiet affair. More so, the hour-long wait for nightfall in an adjacent car park. Even with the radio blasting lively tunes, without any suspicious bystanders loitering the vicinity, the place is rife with tense energy and ghosts. Only a matter of minutes now. Nevertheless, the ticky seconds do not take away the edge, and for the fifth time since I've arrived, I reach out and fiddle with the radio. Adjusting and turning the knobs with no real purpose, it's a nervous quirk I've developed and never bothered to correct during stakeouts. With a lack of friendly conversation to distract, I've nothing else to keep my mind occupied. You should chew on toothpicks. What I would give to hear Zach's, Rebecca's, or Isabella's voice right now. Scope BRC out, see if the real estate company has any more information that may be of help. That's the plan. There still might be some logical explanation, a human element, behind this. Or it is a curse, nothing certain at this point in time. The only way to find out is to investigate. Things about Cooper, and things about Isabella, the two estate agents assigned to the Urban Guard Mansion. They've both worked on it before. No, I... Zachary, I was just talking to her. She was alive, and I shouted at her. I should have at least heard her out, given her the chance. She was so worried about everyone that something might happen to us. Zack, she was warning me. She said we might be in danger. Remember Rose Cooper, her co-worker, on the news? You've heard it, right? She was saying something about her and the letter she got from that mansion. Whoa, whoa, wait, wait there, Rebecca. That's... That's a huge jump in logic right there. And a little bit too much to take in at once, frankly. I know that. If nothing happened, I wouldn't have given it much thought. But as it is, what if she was right all along? What if that letter she found really has something to do with this? The same thing was written in her room with her own blood and... And nothing. I expected to hear a better argument from you, Rebecca. And before you ask, the stupid letter's with forensics now, along with the other evidence. Don't waste your time looking for it. I wonder... The whole case is a train wreck as it is. So, if you see the letter, do you die if you're outside the mansion? Or does it require you specifically to enter the mansion to die? As far as we know, the letter has nothing to do with the curse itself, it's just... there, it's like a byproduct of it. Sure, I can also check the station for full reports. See if I might find something new, or if someone else has caught anything that has slipped my notice. That's the easy, semi-legal way, but I don't want to bump into the chief right now. The guys at the precinct will definitely throw me out as soon as they see me on his orders. Someone else has probably filed it under the Luke Wright case, too, for further inspection. I'm not the only one working on it, after all, and those are off-limits to me now. Yeah, no matter what a 40 I hold, I'll have to break into my own precinct if I wanted so much to take a peek at anything. Sounds like a plan. Not that my plan right now is any better. I'm just breaking into a different place. More or less. With less guns. Hopefully. Honestly, it's a toss-up between breaking into the office or into the Wright's mansion. News of BRC's downsizing and rumors that they might be going under isn't exactly restricted info. Even someone in Isabella's position with their company has been aware of it. If that's the case, I'll have an easier time getting in here first. After all, why would this one want to break into a realty company? Been here many times before, anyway, for a few casual visits when I wanted to bug Scaredy Cat. Over the years, I've more or less grown familiar with their security setup, and how badly staffed their personnel is. Plus, it's an old building. It means their access protocols are old, if not outdated. It gives me confidence as I exit my car, carefully march towards the building, and assess this place to find a good point of entry. No side entrances, unfortunately. I'm gonna have to do this the hard way. Sure, they've likely hired a guard, but talking my way through or slipping past should be easy. Those things considered, though, it feels like this might go smoothly. HA! Except nothing ever does, yes. And short of stepping into the building's lobby, a different voice blasts from the nearby intercom. Gruff. Still rough of sleep. A man likely in his late 40s to early 50s speaks from the other line. Possibly the one currently assigned to the night shift. And where do you think you're going, young man? 
I don't know where I'm going. Generic voice. Hey there, sir. A nice night we're having, eh? You sound like Professor Clark. Hello yourself. It's late. Most, uh, most offices in this building have already closed up shop for the weekend. He seems friendly enough. Though one can't really tell from his voice alone. He might be the wary sort, for all I know. Keeping an unconcerned face and aloof air won't hurt, until I figure out how to wiggle myself out of the situation. Just come back on Monday if you have important business. He's probably been working here for a few months already. I'll give it about four to six months max. Otherwise, he would have recognized me, at first glance. I haven't shown my face here since I've been signed to a firm case a year ago. In the first place, none of the security officers ever lasted a year in service. The longest was around seven and a half. I'll give this guy around that before he gets fired and finds a better paying job. For the moment, his too friendly attitude is almost a gift. <sighs> really? Damn. Boss man won't be too happy to hear that. Boss man? Sorry, it, it's my boss, Mr. John. He asked me to get a few things from his table. Important work stuff, you know. You know, like some of his video games, has recorded equipment and his microphone. He's got a good let's play he's got to do tonight, you know? Since he's got to be on that dot. Mr. Mr. John Critical? You may have heard of him? John? From Briar Realty? The one and only. But, uh, this sucks. I didn't realize the office closes early on weekends. Shouldn't have stayed for another movie. Damn. I'm gonna get an earful later. New hire, you see? Good thing Isabella has been quite open with the stories from her office, no matter how mundane they are. Granted, she really talks about her boss. What I've gleaned from it is enough to fabricate a decent, believable story. Sure enough, he buys it. You new hires are always so dumb and clueless, I swear. You guys come and go a lot these days, but I suppose that's because they pay you a lot less in commission than the older agents, huh? Oh no, it's because we're all dying. Yeah, it's really awkward. You can say that again, but it's nothing hard work can't fix. Sure, you can do that. This branch stays afloat. What do you mean? Uh, you know, stuff in the news. You mean what happened with Rose Cooper? Patience is the key. I can't rush this one or else he'll get suspicious, or I might make a mistake. Besides, if I'm going to be stuck here with him for a while, I might as well try to gather as much intel as I can. He may just be a guard, some of no real 40, but most of the time, people like him are the ones who know more than they let on. A few carefully worded phrases is usually enough to get them talking, so long as you appear friendly and pretend like you're not smart or too interested. Yeah, but even before that, we've got a couple of good blokes we never saw again. Was this one kid too, uh, Santillian? Sanchez? Santos. He means Isabella. Really? Those guys could have just resigned for all you know. No, I only catch tidbits of stuff from over here. Though seriously, I heard the branch is getting flushed soon, but that's no excuse for anarchy. You're the third newbie he sent running errands this week. I can't keep letting you all in after office hours. I'll get in trouble too, you know? Come on, just a few minutes. There's a long pause from his end. As if he's contemplating his options. When they turn like this, a little push is all it needs before they give in. You know how fickle the boss's moods can be. Well, yeah, but... Please, I really need to get those files to him tonight. <sighs> Alright, go ahead. I swear you young ones have no respect for authority. Use the side entrance. I've already locked up the main door. I'm not gonna open that even if you give me puppy eyes. Thanks, I owe you one. Using a side door presents a different problem, however. It needs an access card, one I don't have. I can always pry it open and use a gecko, but right under the guard's watch, it's a sure for a way to blow my cover. Ah, uh, uh, there's just this one problem. What is it, again? I forgot my access card. I make a show of facing the security cameras, pulling my empty pockets out, and presenting him the sorriest look I can muster. Ah, uh, bloody hell, kids these days. Is there any way for you to... Boy, you're lucky I'm nice. I'll go and unlock the side entrance for you then. You can use my card, it's on the front desk. You'll need to beep in when you report for proper work on Monday though. And don't forget to turn off the lights before you leave, Kate. He cuts off the connection before I can thank him. Soon the latch clinks and the nearby side door swings open, waiting for me. The guard, a stout man wearing a uniform still too loose for him, waves me over from the gap before he disappears behind his station again. Just my luck. But it's not like he keeps, keeps keeping the job for long, if he's always letting people in like that. If ERC doesn't have long either, he's going to go job hunting sooner or later anyway. Most likely why he let us in, to be honest. He's lucky I'm not here to hurt anyone. If I were someone else, someone with ill intentions, he might not be smiling at the end of the day. 
Of course, as I step into the building and grab his access card, I try to push all these corners as far down as I can. I need to focus. Work is work. No time to think about other stuff. But I might have a bigger problem in hand. The g, -g, -g ghost Although this is a sign of things to come, that maybe things are indeed looking up. Ah! Oh god, this is a death trap. It's a quiet right up to the seventh floor, where the BRC Luxborn office main office is. Zeb, according to his access card, has been kind enough to switch the elevator's power on just as I'm about to head for the fire exit stairs. Which is a welcome relief. I'm an active guy, but stairs? I don't want to tire out too quickly, in case things get ugly. There probably won't be any trouble if the building is quiet, but you never know. Besides, the whole place still feels eerie this time of night. The occasional thought of ghosts lurking about certainly doesn't help. Though there is no wind, I swear I can hear whispering. Every shadow is suspect. And with the low light, every time I see my reflection is a daunting affair. I have to firmly remind myself, until I've confirmed anything, those are still just stories. Worse things can happen. I need to scare myself of whatever image my head conjures. I have a mission. Going about as calmly as I can means fewer mistakes. Oh, I sure am fucking gutsy, especially with what I'm doing. I'm breaking a lot of laws here. Best thing that can come out of this is that Isabella was right all along. But this whole fiasco does point to a curse. And that makes sure nobody else dies to the damn thing. Oh yes, that's the best thing. It turns out it's a killer ghost curse. Not like a conventional murder. That's gonna be so much easier to handle. Worst case scenario? I find evidence that will implicate BRC or Luke Wright in a crime, and my meddling, if I'm not careful not to hide my tracks, make, makes it inadmissible in court. Actually, that's not completely true. Or is it the other way around? Both certainly don't sound better than the other, though right now, the latter seems very enticed to wish for. In the first place, this whole deal of curses is crazy. I'll be honest. I strongly prefer losing my job or facing right, over some spirit or ghost or whatever it is all my friends have claimed they've seen. At least if there will be problems with the former, I can always work around it. Fighting off a phantom? How does one even do that? Do guns even work with them? Probably not. A paranormal gun would black blat. I'm crazy just going here, but what choice do I have? I can't just say, oh, hey, Chief, how do you know about this Frank Strange? It's about a ghost, 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 or something, you know, ghost. Yeah, not going to happen. This whole thing has already spiraled out of our hands. This is simply damage control. Working for what I have and I can still do. Get to the bottom of this, see how I can fix this whole mess. But do without anybody knowing, without leaving a trail, all the better. It's a good thing that that's what I'm good at. <laughs> The immediate area beyond the elevator door sees the agent station. Kachivo hat, big knowledge. It's get into the BRC on your own. I guess if he is Isabella, she would be coming with us. The immediate area beyond the elevator door sees the agent stations. There's a lot more to the floor, of course, but the first order of business as soon as I'm in. Locate the records room, then the security. Passing the sea of cubicles, I can't help but take in everything in their office. A force of habit for the most part. As far as I know, BRC Luxborn used to own this whole building. Offices of several floors once upon a time, and real estate is still a lucrative business for the company, on this side of the country. Then competition showed up and suddenly, everything's not so good anymore. It only got worse as the years went by, or so according to the rumors. Years later, the whole of the branch is just its floor, despite what the huge sign in the building facade implies. Frankly, it's not too hard to believe when one looks at the state of this room right now. Almost empty, in every sense of the word. Not only because it's beyond business hours, but most of the cubicles are devoid of any signs that speak about other owners. Desks have, desks have been cleared out, and even a single indication of the person who once worked there remains, with exception for the occasional company notice left behind tacked onto the wall. Personal mementos are scarce, as if they've gone through a mass ex exodus or everyone died. Now be the downsizing. Probably. With what's in the news, what happened to Isabella, it's impossible for my mind not to speculate and veer off into more ominous territory. Searching for what I need would be a whole lot easier if Isabella were here. She'd tell me more about what plagues my curiosity as well. She's always been... With what's in the news, what happened to Isabella, it's impossible not to speculate and veer off into more ominous territory again? We just, we just deja vu'd, what? 
Focus, Frey. There's no point in whining or dwelling any longer on it. That's why I'm here in the first place. Did... did I slip past in this time stream? Without her, I'll just have to investigate and find out the old-fashioned way. I'm a detective, aren't I? Even means having to read through a shit ton of real estate estate papers and documents. I normally won't be interested in it. Besides, the longer I take here, the riskier the situation becomes. With that in mind, I immediately get to work. On the far wall of the main workspace, plaques label most of the doors for easy identification. The staff lounge, the branch manager's offices are places I'm familiar with, and they're easily the most accessible of the private rooms. To the right of the manager's office is the meeting room and the human resources. To its far left in the records, followed by security further back. Easy as pie. What will be tricky is getting inside both rooms. Gingerly, I check on the security room first. The fact that no one has walked out when I entered means the room is either empty or there are guards sound asleep. I'm banking more on the former. If they're cutting corners and firing agents, I have no doubt in my mind that they've fired the guy stationed in here. If they have anyone watching the monitor, is in the first place. It's a rather common thing for establishments. Just leave security record recording indefinitely and only check the footage if something actually happens. Like that's gonna happen in about two minutes when a ghost is gonna pop up. So we're isolated, we're alone, looking for the truth. That ghost is gonna make an exception. Especially since it hasn't hot ash before, it's gonna be like... It's gonna be driving for rush hour traffic, saying, I got a place to be here, come on! Like... It's been haunting Luke this entire time, it's like, it's up to find out the truth, I gotta be there! Hey, come on, drive on faster! Ghost in traffic. It's a real thing, look it up. Just to check, I press my ears against the door, listening for a sign of anyone occupying the room. For a long minute of nothing, not even the sound of someone's breathing, I move back towards the record store and give it a knob a few rattles. Standard lock and key. Should be easy enough to pick. We have lock picks set though they'll only be useful if necessary and with a search warrant. Even then, it's a skill set really needed. Subtlety isn't on the cops' priority if they have a 40 to search the premises. Bolt cutters and brute force are the favorite methods. If those fail, we call a locksmith. Me, I prefer the good old hairpin trick when those options aren't available. Besides, they're easy to hide and store for emergencies. Putting my hand through my hair, I pull a pair of bobby pins. Two of these, I can just about open any standard lock. One makes a lever and the other one makes a handle. I won't call it a complex skill, but it's one takes time and a lot of practice to successfully pick a lock. Good thing I've practiced with them for a bit in my college years. I learn more when they're accessible and standard issue for a law enforcement officer. I wiggle here and I click there, and I manage to seize all the pins in the locking mechanism soon enough. With a slight turn of the knob, the record room's ripe for the picking. Easier said than done. Now, where should I start looking? The property files will probably be my best bet. Pull the Armand Garden Mansion's documents and go on from there. Look into the project and the people who worked on it, including Isabella and Rose Cooper. A sign in forms for open house can help me track the clients. It's a little too far-fetched to think those people will be affected in some way. Isabella has already found the lair by the time the open house has started. So if there be people from their guests who have been affected, it will be news now. Besides, out of all the visitors, it's only the right couple. Isabella and Cooper has had noble, notable interaction with. Something that has led to the sale of the mansion. So for the next half hour, Ash is going to monologue forever and ever to himself because there's no one to talk to except himself. I work in complete silence. Taking to every property files compiled in the Ermengarde Mansion folder. It's going to be a literal half hour, by the way. The client files I leave alone, like the sign-in forms. Bear narrow this down as early as possible. My best bet are still the people who have worked closely with Cooper Isabel in the BRC. Itself. After all, that's where the connection is. Still not an easy task, considering how thick the whole thing is. Just the correspondence and the contracts of restoration alone makes up a stack of papers that's an inch thick. Third-party service providers hired by the, for the masonry, radiators, woodworking, plasterworks, lady roofing, and a whole bunch of other things are well documented. Hell, every single contractor working the project is individually listed, even if they're just there to do the plumbing. And they're all dead. It's a high-profile and high-cost estate, all right. But with that scope come the loopholes. It means plenty of room to hide something in, if there's something fishy going on. All I have to do is read through it, find a pattern that'll prove or refute my suspicions, and it doesn't take long. Upon closer glance, despite the original owner's shouldering the renovation costs, 
It'll be surprising if they manage to break even on the Ermengarde Mansion. What with the additional expenses for the open house, the commission for their agents, and the over overhead fees. At one point, the negotiations to get listed in BRC's name also broke down, too. Some disagreement about the listing price. The owners wanted to be rid of it as quickly as possible, while keeping the wharf at a profitable level. I wonder why. BRC was insisting on a higher amount, double what the appraiser suggested. This, plus the idea that their branch is closing. It won't be too far-fetched to think BRC Luxborn really is in the red, and the sale of the mansion could easily have been a desperate move to keep the branch afloat. No wonder the final sale happened as fast as it did. Sheesh, this place is just unlucky. Going bankrupt while the rest of this crap is happening? But this isn't what I'm looking for. What I need is the who. The people aside from Isabel and Cooper involved in this business with the mansion. And the how they are now. I can't do much of the outside contractors. It won't be on file as employees. Still, leave no stone, or stone unturned. Look at their names. See if anything jogs my memory. Get a copy of said names so that we can look at their contact details up. Check if anything comes from that. Aside from those, I don't dwell much on these. The employee list stands the most important out of everything. Because if Isabella is to be believed, it's if what she's seen and what happened to Rose Cooper is because of that letter, I need to know everyone who has possibly read it aside from the three of us. I also need to confirm that they've been noticing strange things, too. For all I know, these may have just been a terrible coincidence, although the thought of that starts to diminish as I dig into the BRC's company files. Turns out there have been two more employees who directly handled the mansion, aside from Cooper and Sabella, who were obviously dead. That's why they got the job, and they're the rookies. Christian Sai, the realty specialist, and Mark Julius Jean Marie, the estate appraiser. This C guy, he was in custody just the other day. Folks at the precinct said they went to this house after a noise complaint. They found him acting all crazy and had to take him in when he started getting violent. He kept screaming about a woman. It was driving the guards mad, but he didn't last too long. A few hours in, he just started bashing his own head against the wall. And, well, it was messy to say the least. Guy's in the hospital right now. I heard they're looking to put him into a psychiatric ward as soon as he recovers. Within the company's records, he's been marked AWOL. John Marie, on the other hand. His employee file marks his day of leaving and even his full payment had been given. Along with it, I learned to his family about the appraiser being found dead in the office. Communication is hush hush, there's a mention of compensation they don't talk about to the media. Inspector Abigail has often scolded me for not reading the reports on a regular basis, but I try to keep those up to date as much as I can. When I do, I make sure I'm aware of the gist of what's going on in my city. This? This has never reached the police's ears or the health and safety executive. Business going under and someone dies while working here? Of course they want to keep that quiet. It's bad publicity. This whole thing is just getting freakier by the minute. I continue flipping through the documents for a while more. It's a quarter of an hour later when I put down the papers with a sigh and begin placing back the folders where they belong. Aside from those two, I have found nothing else of note. I feel like I'm missing a lot of things here. But it's about time I leave. I've taken too long. Hastily, I put everything in a copier and make a short work of creating duplicates out of everything I've been important. We get like a honk honk in the front. See like some lights pull up to the building. See like that ghost gala car all raggedy and it's like, oh, hit brush our traffic. Oh no, oh, no. God, I gotta climb up 50 stairs. What? Ah, oh, this Ashton guy better be worth killing. Oh, I locked my keys in the car. Oh well, I just murdered him and uh, I'll call AAA. The ghosts of my imagination live a very funny life. <laughs> The pages with the names, addresses, and contact numbers will do. I'll start with the ones who live within the city. Once I finish with the copier, I tuck the duplicates under my arm and bring the originals back to their proper place. With that done, I lock the door behind me. Tuck in twice just to make sure. I have my work cut out for me. It's not like I can ask for backup from the force. Whatever. This isn't the time to think. Now on to the next order of business. Removing the evidence of my little excursion in here. Can't have my face plastered in security footage. Show me breaking the law as it were. I'm gonna have to wipe the data for Seb's access card entries too, so I won't incriminate the poor guy. Same with the records. The security's also using a standard lock and key. Good thing my trusty bobbies are always here for me. By much difficulty, I found myself facing the security monitors. 
Seems like we're kind of like a dark, dark spot in that one camera there. I wonder, I wonder if that's, uh, yeah, it's kind of bleak in there. I wonder if that's, you know, I wonder if that's our ghost arriving from rush shower. The room's odor, odor hits me first. A sharp, nauseating stench as if someone has accidentally spilled a gratuitous gallon of bleach in the room. I spent a copious amount of time in morgues, lab, hospitals, and crime scenes, but this is downright nasty. Regardless of how desensitized I've grown to certain smells, I wonder if the air in this room just burns the lungs. When was the last time they opened this place? Ugh, this place smells awful. Jesus, it's worse than the forensics lab on a bad day. This is probably because of a badly botched effort to clean the place up. Even in the dark, I can spot disgusting stains on the walls. I really don't have the time to try and decipher what they are, though. Can't play as just ketchup or soda right now. But I have this strange gut feeling who the mess might belong to. As expected, no security personnel mans this office's CCTV controls, and the standalone DVR setup is open for anyone. Normally I'd have a heap of things to say about this sloppy security setup, but right now their negligence makes the whole task of erasing evidence easier. Uh, we're still not dozing on a little spot there, okay. It's as simple as going into the menu, searching for the file for tonight's recording, and, well, deleting it. No fuss, no muss. Next one should be the access card data. Hopefully getting to their computer won't be too much of a hassle. Everything up to now has been smooth sailing. There have been hiccups, I'll give it that. But it does nothing to dampen the good mood I'm in. Once I shift my attention to the machines next to the DVR setup, all but swiftly evaporates. I'm no computer buff, but I can definitely recognize one more than a decade old. So looking at it just makes me feel younger. I know her choice, however, unless I pull a douche card and leave Seb to whatever trouble he might get into. Unfortunately, I don't have the heart for such a thing. After all, the help the old man has unknowingly lent, lent me tonight. With a heavy sigh, I power it up and mentally prepare myself for a slow slug. Slow, apparently, remains an understatement here. It takes a whole three minutes for the thing to start up. The OS has even started loading, and in my morning, I'm starting inspecting the fi live feeds from the cams. Only two of them works. One for the view outside, everything should be in order there, and the other for the main workspace where. It's a fleeting glimpse, a cursor cursory glance, but the sight of it stops me. Now we have a little Freddy fun here. The image is a bit blurry. Help, oh, help, oh, it's getting clearer. But standing there, right in the middle of the room by one of the cubicles, I can make out the form of a person. What the hell is... I don't get too far into that line of thought. I'm telling you, this ghost is really smart. It might as well not be a ghost. It's just a serial killer of all the advantages of a ghost. No few seconds after my words have slipped out. Without any sort of warning, while I'm still trying to make sense of what it is. Oh, great. It always attacks us. Oh, great, it's getting closer. The figure moves. Hey, it's gone. Not across the office floor. Well, oh, right towards the camera. Gradually as it nears, it's, her features grow clearer. Deathly pale skin and her hair like ink. Too real and too close. Stand out, stands out in stark contrast to the images shown on the monitor. The moment of paralysis hits me when she stops running for the camera. Like a damn rookie, I go still in the face of danger. Nothing but an off clicking noise and the pounding of my own heart echoes my eardrums. I definitely haven't been trained to handle the supernatural. And this is one, isn't it? Time to become a paranormal cop. And. Oh, fuck. Her eyes bore into me. The malice in them piercing. Even beyond the screen, it's enough to make me go numb. Only the mug crushing to the floor. When my hand actually swipes it and snaps me out of the trance. Without a second font, I'm back away from the controls. From the room where he could be done with this place. But before my foot even crosses the threshold, without any sort of warning, she disappears from the screen. Son of a Whoa, we Instinct instantly takes over. My hand quickly reaches for the gun at my side, only to meet empty air. Though off her eyes, I always leave in my car. A mistake that cost me a few precious seconds. Well paperwork I brought paperwork I brought with me friends to scare everywhere at the same time. Gathering them and myself once more with no weapon to protect myself, my sense of self-preservation kicks in next and I lunge towards the door. I sprint across the office floor without daring to look back. As soon as I push myself out of the office, I practically throw myself into the open elevator and send the bun to the ground floor. Oh man, I sure hope it can't teleport into elevators. 
A sigh of relief escapes my lips when the elevator starts its descent. A clicking, the clicking noise that seems to announce the ghost's presence fades off into the distance. Shifting a stack of papers under my arm, I lean back and wait, and attempt to compose myself. Breathe. In and out. Oh no. In a matter of seconds, the elevator stops and doors open. Instead of stopping at the ground floor, however, it completely skips. And just drops me into the building's basement. That damn clever ghost! There was a moment pause while taking my surroundings. Confusion's understandably there along with frustration. Are you kidding me? They should just replace this whole thing! I'm quite sure I pressed the ground floor, though. But it's an old building. The elevator always did have problems when I visited in the past. It probably didn't register right when I pressed the floor number. Even as Isabella becomes so angry whenever we try to get to her floor, and she'll have to repeatedly smash the button for the elevator to even move. That was always good for a laugh. I wasn't too worried then. All of it completely changes when I hear a clicking noise again. From a distance, beyond the light's reach, echoing my ears along with a rapid pounding in my chest. Anyone there? Yes, it's a ghost. Hi, how you doing? I'm here to murder you. Um, just stay right there, and this will get over really quick. It's gonna be real painful, but that, you know, that's okay. For you. For me. Not for you. No answer. I can hear you moving from here. Show yourself! No response. Only a soft sound of something scurrying around the floor and the walls in the slow, deliberate movements. Faint, though still audible enough to end this hush. Until it stops. A moment. It's right in front of me. And then... A wail. This time I turn into my imagination. Start hitting the buttons. I get to my training, my whole body stiffens. Hands stealing mid-press on the bun, eyes growing wide while waiting for any sort of movement from the further back, and ears straining for the source of the sound. Much as I hate to admit, dread has seeped into every nerve in my body. And the blasted elevator still won't work, no matter how many times my thumb presses on it. This isn't in my fucking training manual! <laughs> oh, I see it. I never see her shuffling against the ground, a laughter, and all of a sudden she's just there. A small grotesque form leaning at the far end of the basement on all floors. Like a twisted spider, she stares at me. A look of hunger in her eyes and the venom in the twisted manner she smiles. I believe she has well earned when my damn fly has been dropped right onto the spider's web. Damn it! Damn it! Without warning, she moves. Mocking me with each unhurried crawl she takes. Knowing I'm at her mercy, she makes her approach. Fucking hell, work, you stupid! But this isn't funny. Kinda is. My life is in the hands of a crummy elevator. Literally hanging between life and death. Whether or not this stupid thing works. I'm not going to die here. Not that damn elevator. Close. Go! Yo! No! No! Okay. Hoo wee. Beast mode! As if a design power has heard me swearing up a storm in my head. The door is closed just as the thing looms near. Soon, the elevator, the blasted thing, is headed up. And this? This is the most I've been tired of my whole damn life. Not during training, when my superior first asked me to drop a hundred. Not after a stakeout, but after smashing a fucking elevator button repeatedly. I slump to the ground, worn out, but I don't let myself feel relief again. Not until I'm out of here. Still, I find myself letting out a shaky laugh. Fuck, I should have taken the goddamn stairs. Yep. Twice, I've seen it. Thrice, if I include the party. Unless I'm tripping balls without realizing it. There's no doubt in my mind that this is actually happening. Thank you, Ash. I'm glad you finally realized after it was too late. I seriously don't want to believe it. But with the truth staring at me in the face, it'll be stupidity to deny the reality of the matter. As soon as the lift hits the ground floor and the door slide open, I hightail out of the building. Steps down to sleep when I pass by a station. However, in the face of what I've seen, everything I've faced tonight, I really can't care less who will still see me on my way out. The sooner I get away from this place, the farther the better. I'm just not sure if that also means being safe. She almost got me, damn it! The fucking Fang Hal almost had me! Hell, I haven't even sorted everything and running against my head right now. All I can see is her face, her horrid smile, as she's about to reach us. Shite, it was only by luck that I managed to get the fucking elevator unstuck. Had the blasted thing not worked in the last second, I need some air. 
fresh breathable air that doesn't stink like death and gore all at once. I'm panicking. Christ. Looking focused. I can't afford that right now. I can't lose it when Zack and Rebecca might be in trouble as well. Remember your training, Frey. <sighs> Another deep breath. And soon, I'm starting the engines in my car and driving off. After that little incident in the elevator, somewhere open wouldn't be good. Someplace I won't get trapped. Good, you realize that it's something no one else realized, apparently. Luxburn Park during nighttime brings a welcome relief, though only by some. Kaylee's gonna show up and start singing. What are you doing here at night, mister? What are you? The chill that seeped in my bones is still there, furling and unfurling underneath my skin. If I don't move, if I don't busy myself with anything, soon my brain will go haywire. It's the last thing I want to happen when there are plenty of things to do. But this already answers all of it, doesn't it? Those deaths. Just how many copies of the letter are out there? Isabella can't have the only one if other people are also getting cursed. Maybe they're just going to the mansion, that's all that matters. It could be that the one she has shown us is just one of five, and maybe even more. The whole passage of five people business is ridiculous. But at this point, is it still? All in all, I found two deceased people who might have read the letter. Four, if we count Cooper as well as Isab Isabella. That's only with what I can find right now. I have no idea how the contractors and specialists hired from the outside company are doing, if they are in any way infected. How many poor people are suffering? How many are missing? How many are dead? I can't even blame the rights for this anymore. If anything, they might be in danger as well. I don't think I can wish a curse upon anyone, no matter how big of a douchebag Luke Wright is. There's also that woman. How do we get out of this mess? How do we get away from here? Shite. Still so many things we need to look into. The only body wants to do is pace. Tread the park grounds and burn out whatever excess energy there is in me. I'm not going crazy, am I? I saw that. I'm pretty sure I saw that. I didn't inhale anything weird. Just shit. Shit, 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 shit! Of course, the panic passes soon. Replaced by number 10 silence as everything sinks in. The awareness of much bigger trouble looming over me. Us. We're in deep shut, and it's finally caught up to me and hit me like a ton of bricks. But like a really powerful ghost hitting a wall. Because Isabella has been warning us of this since day one. And I'm the first person who brushed it off. Suddenly exhausted, I slumped down on the bench and buried my face in my hands. In the stillness of the park, a whispered plea slips out. Isabella, what am I supposed to do? Tell me, please. With desperation. After all my failures, after all the things I've disregarded, all at the cost of people I care about. This is a unique song. Darkness blurs the edge of my vision. Black tendrils twist and coil around my limbs. Soft footfalls echo from the far distance, scurrying, scampering, moving in an odd rhythm with the sharp piercing notes of her laughter. A scream threatens a burst, and my throat closes off. Ever so slowly, a chill seeps into every nerve in my body, washing away every sensation in me apart from one. There's only fear. Once again her laughter echoes, a sound both bitter and unforgiving is the last thing I heard before she reaches for me. The ground trembles. The world slows to a stop. What a nice morning. Do we sleep here all night? Still have not hit October 31st with anyone except for Zachary. Interesting. So Ash goes and discovers that the ghost is real on the 29th. Um... But not time for him to, like, warn Rebecca about it before she gets cornered by the ghost in the library. Or, like, hook up with Zack. Hmm. Morning breaks in a blurry mess of vivid shapes and colors. Oddly, there's no feeling of terror or confusion gripping me, despite the vague images that have driven me from sleep. Awareness kicks in shortly, though slow and sluggish, as I blink away the last remnants of unconsciousness from my eyes. The early morning light already streams from the open windows. And the memory sets in, and the room I finally in comes into focus. Not a room. My car. I bugged me down here last night after my nerves have calmed. What if the ghost comes for Shirley? When you almost get trapped in a confined space, there's no question about staying somewhere open. Not again. She might appear any time. She won't catch me off guard again. That... that woman. 
that you still won in the first place, one that we normally call a human. I can still feel guilt. Does I understand pain? Fork, I take breaking and drink charges over wherever she was any day. Pushing myself upright, my eyes wander idly towards mess up papers I've gathered from BRC last night. I prove that none of it is a dream, no matter how much I wish for it. I prove that none of it is a dream, no matter how much I wish for it. Wait, that's the second time he's like deja vu on me. Then it shifts to the view outside, right to the lines of trees and winding pathways. The way Ash handles this ghost actually reminds me of a recent horror movie. Um, was it was it Don't Walk? Something like that. That's where the ghost constantly pursues you, and, like possesses kind of like in different forms all the time, and like you have to never like never corner yourself in a room and you'll be okay. There's some already strolling about the place, a few people here and there, telling the space that my eyes can reach, but otherwise the whole park is empty. Quiet. For some reason, I can't stand the silence right now. Not when that woman's face has been burned in my eyelids. Whenever I close my eyes, I see her. It's a miracle I'm still able to get a few hours of sleep even with that horrid laughter of hers still ringing in my ears. But then, maybe it's simply my excess ox exhaustation at work. You think I've been used to going 48, 48 hours, maybe even more without rest. And I am. What happened to BRC has shaken me up like nothing else has. Thugs and criminals, hell, even crime lords, I can deal with, but ghouls and the undead? Well, I didn't sign up for that. Seriously, this better not be the start of some sort of zombie apocalypse. Actually, maybe a zombie thing would be preferable. I at least know what I need to do. She dead stuff until they're dead for good and leave figuring out how everything went to hell to the scientists. Blat, blat. Pin them cop. Thinking about it won't change anything, though. She's just toying with our lives. She's dangerous. If we don't do anything about her in this curse, we'll definitely be pushing daisies soon. I can't let what happened to Isabella happen to the others as well. I've dallied on this long enough left all my friends in harm's way after the warnings they've given me. It follows. It follows the horror movie I'm thinking of. Good movie. I do admit I'm afraid. Beneath the terror, adrenaline keeps running running. It compels me to take action. To do something. I still have two other people I need to check with. Isabella would definitely get in tizzy if I don't check on them. God, I should have listened to Isabella. Maybe I don't need to outright believe her, but I should have listened. Then maybe she wouldn't be... There's no point in dwelling on what ifs and what should haves. I can't do anything about the past. What I should be caring about is what might happen. That I can do something about. <sighs> With one last sigh, I start my car and slowly pull off the parking lot. Back has already been warned yesterday. I trust him not to do anything stupid. Rebecca, on the other hand, we ended on a bad note last time. Might as well mend things with her first. Cold Luxborn Air meets me upon slipping out of my car. Not unusual in itself. This is what Luxborn weather is supposed to be. A bit cold, damp for the most part. More often than not, terribly drab over an occasional sprinkling of rain every few hours. The sky is still clear, and I'll give it a day or two, before the weather takes a turn for the worse. I've complained about the awful rains for years, but having lived here my entire life. I have to admit, though, seeing return to the usual feels extremely reassuring. At least something's still normal in the world, but I can no longer think the same for the situation we're in. So let's see, what route are we... How is the branching looking right now? A nightmare. That's probably all this is. Usually I'll say I've been through worse, but that's simply a never lie I've often told myself, isn't it? And I've fed myself a great deal of lies for the years, just so I won't have to think about the next day. Maybe we won't even have this problem if I haven't been running away and ignoring things. Hiding them someplace no one will see, because I've since been believed in doing so as a show of weakness. The e has shown me phonographs, 
mentioned weird things happening around him these past few days. Bottom line, he likely knows about much about this as I do. Why else would he approach me? The guy who knows stuff according to him. In the end, all I've done is give him the brush off. Some reliable guy I am. Hell, Rebecca is probably in the same boat. Grasping for anything that might provide an answer. A way out of this. What can any of us do? When all of us lacks any understanding of what's happening. One thing's clear about this, however. That thing is after us because... Because of the letter. Name drop. Isabella already died because of it. Yet here I am w walking up Becca's door. One slow step at a time. A stalling tactic to allow myself some time to put the mess in my head in a better order. How to phrase this? When there's a 90% chance she's still pissed about a whole different matter. It's the only reason I didn't check on her last night. I only alarm her by showing up in her home in the middle of the night, acting like a babbling lunatic. And her anger can last quite a while. These past years, it seemed the only one she had been easily able to forgive was Isabella. I kinda wish you were here to help me talk to her. I ran my hand through my hair and straightened out my jacket before knocking. Once, twice, and three times just to be sure Becca has heard me. Even if she's asleep. She's usually awake by now, though. Hey, Becca, it's Ash. Open up. Don't tell me you're still in bed. Seconds tick by. No answer from her. And Dredd has started to creep up. I've been trained to handle dire situations. But the feeling has been doing that quite frequently since last night. You know, it feels kind of weird because Isabella was kind of sold as the main character. And since we killed Isabella off... She's been completely inactive from this entire game now that I think about it. A little weird. My mind begins to anticipate the worst, and the next minute, concern has mixed in with my thoughts and I bang my fist on the door. Louder this time. She'll definitely be livid. I'd rather face a wrath than a dead body. Becca! It's Ash! There's something we need to talk about right away! Open up, I know you're- I know you're in there and not just somewhere else because you're trying to investigate the ghost and you're about to be ambushed right now because we have so many misunderstandings between each other. Your girlfriend I think. left early this morning, pretty boy. What's with your voice? So if you could do us a bloody favor and shut up, that'd be real fucking polite. Oh, okay, nice. My hand pauses a short love landing on another heavy knock. But the other units, Rebecca's other neighbor peeks in through his door. Though I see nothing but a bundle of blankets. I'll say they need help from being devoured by their sheets, but it sounds like he's just fine. He's a huge asshole, too. Course of action, so people like him norm your day? Act like the nicest person on the planet. It's done me wonders when I was a rookie patrolling the streets. No need to match his temper. Oh, did she say where she was going? I don't know. She said something about meeting someone or something. Well, what am I, her keeper? You know, some people want to sleep in on a bloody Sunday, so keep it down. I was looking forward to this weekend. Thanks, you damn git. You're the most stereotypical British insulting person I've ever met. Well, there's no need to be an ass about it. I'll get out of your... And I've met RPG Minx. Whoa! He slams his door shut without warning, but not before muttering a string of very colorful words about me. Probably things I won't hear him outside the four walls of his apartment. Jerk. <sighs> and at the end of it, a sigh. So, Rebecca's not here. I must have missed her by an hour or so. But at least she's not alone. She should be safe. In theory. More so if the person she's meeting with is who I'm thinking. Nevertheless, I still can't help but worry. It's an easy thing. Continue down increasingly darker lines of thought. To act brashly. To find out where she is and go straight from there. Without deliberating on my actions first. There's Zach to boot. Rebecca's not alone, but I can't see the same for the big guy. A simple phone call to both of them should do the trick, unless the ghost jams the signal, because they're pretty smart about that. It'll ease my nerves, at any rate. It's better than rushing over to Zack's place for assuming Rebecca's whereabouts, and finding out that they're not where I've guessed they should be. Assuming the worst will come next, which I'd rather avoid this early. Any other reason, I won't bother them, but an emergency begs for urgency. This is one, right? Even if it isn't. Anxiety from concern dulls judgment. Something I most certainly can't afford to lose at any given time, especially right now. Any means to comment will do wonders for the muddled mess my mind is already in. Pulling up my phone, I thumb through the screen until it ends up on a group of only Zach's, Rebecca's, and Isabella's numbers listed. The last one I don't have the heart to remove yet. 
Other people almost probably say I, I keep too few friends when they chance on this. To some extent, it's true. Looks like I mind contacts. I can use about hundred people being acquainted with through the years. Colleagues, blockmates from uni, neighbors, those sort of people. They all come and go. But these three... These three have chosen to stay for some reason. Without wanting or asking for anything. Unlike the others, none has Zach's kindness. Rebecca's patience, nor the sincerity in Isabella's eyes. One day, these guys were just there. The next thing I know, being with them eases it. That heavy, somber feeling lingering in the air. This is going to be a tragic route towards the end with how I've played. When you stand alone in your apartment, or something as simple as spending your day off without anyone. I'll say it's loneliness. This carries much more depth than that. If I can help it, I don't want to lose the rest of them to some stupid curse. I've already lost one. Hey, third time's a charm. Well, you'll find out about that soon enough. A phone call may be the least comforting thing at the moment. Honestly, I prefer being in the same room with them right now. But I'll take what I can get. Becca first. Look at angry at me for worrying about her. She isn't some helpless damsel in distress, after all. She isn't the shy little girl I knew when we were children. We're already far from the people we were back then. That's more than enough reason to check in on her. I don't have to imagine her taking anything head on. She'll do it instead of asking for help when she needs it. I don't care if she gets mad at me. If I only, if only to know that she's fine. A ring. The sounds of the hallway, it sounds alone might it well be sharp enough to pierce through my ears. Another second passes. Two. Three. When the knife ring goes straight to her voicemail, a cold feeling instantly lodges in my stomach. Rebecca Gale's here. You've reached my voicemail. Sorry if I can't get to you right now. That's not cool. Oh, and if this is Isabella, yes. You're free to reheat the food in my fridge. Otherwise, leave a message. Probably just busy, that's all. Though I still barely, barely manage to keep my voice even when I speak. Hey, Becca, call me back when you're free. We need to talk. ASAP. Becca will be alright. Is alright. No. She's safe. She's with someone else. That someone else is a ghost. In the event that that woman shows up, she'll have someone with her. Someone she'll be able to ask for help. Oof. She's safe. She can handle herself. Becca might have a fiery temper, but she knows when she's faced with something she can't handle herself. Rebecca will see my missed call and she'll call me back. Though I don't express it enough, Rebecca is someone I consider important to me. Oh, it's little Rebecca. Ash looks like a little anime character. <laughs> oh god. Yeah, actually you look kinda like Ash. I just I'll just say it right now. She's been my friend for the longest. Far too long that anybody else would have been fed up with me and left. The girl stuck by me, no matter how big of a jerk I've been. There's Zach too, of course. I'll always be thankful for having them around. And I've been Isabella as well. Her presence in my life will always be immutable. Even if she's no longer here. The worst times before, however, Becca was there. No one believes it when I say it, but I've surely had my awful moments as a bratty kid and as a horrible teen. Issues I have too many to count and refuse to deal with for a time. At least that's what Andrew likes to tell me. I tend to think nothing of it. It has melted down over the years thanks to the professor, mostly. But at times, I do wonder if it still burns me the way it did all those years ago. After all, I was terrible. Especially around the time of my parents' separation. Looking back at it now, I had no reason to direct all my frustration towards everyone else. While I wasn't a kid who lashed out at anyone, preferring to keep myself and turning those negative feelings into more protective things, I've grown distant from a lot of people because of it. From my old friends back in my old school and the neighbors I've hung out with before moving. A habit I've likely brought with me into adulthood. I was just so angry with everyone and everything. All I kept thinking about was myself, wondering, why me? In retrospect, I was a little selfish, little bastard who found the world around, revolved around me. That I shouldn't have been going through it. I believe my behavior was entitled. They had the right. Tough times, but she stuck with me. Snap me on my little sulk, as she often phrases it. Whenever she sees a chance to bring it up. She didn't tolerate my bullshit, but she didn't leave me alone either. If anything... The whole thing made her stick around. Her concern may have grown a bit too overbearing as the years went by, but she's still an old friend, nevertheless. I owe her a lot. That won't change. Damn it. Where are you, Becca? Another message left on her voicemail. Then to my third call, I hang up. 
For the time being, I can't do anything more than to wait for her to return my calls. Worrying aimlessly won't get me anywhere. Zack, on the other hand. That guy tracks trouble no matter how much he tries to avoid it. Doesn't help how he hasn't been too hot lately with a lot of people. His mention of plans yesterday doesn't sit too well with me, either. He might be the next responsible adult after Rebecca, out of the four of us, but I've still got to check on the big guy. Make sure he's doing okay, at the very least, whatever he has planned on doing. All I'm asking is for not to be idiotic. He's a sensible guy, I'm sure. However, desperation clings and pushes people to do things, rational or irrational, it doesn't matter. Clear thinking flies out the window the moment you're in danger, and I sincerely hope he has not found himself in a tricky situation. His phone doesn't even ring before he answers, or his voicemail, at least. Hey, Zack! Well, a voicemail, anyway. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So, uh, just leave a message, yeah? They're both horribly dead. You no, know, Ash, you're not allowed to lockpick your way into my apartment again. Just do what any other decent human being does and call if I'm not around. Thanks. I feel like the implication is if you're hearing this message, you are trying to call. Do you turn it off? Why? I don't want to assume the worst yet. Maybe he has forgotten to charge it. Can't be. The guy would be a bit of a boy scout even more than I am as a cop. He's the type who has an extra barrier power bank in his bag if he ever needs it. And he always does. He won't say anything or brag about it. But he's got quite a roster of VIP freelance clients. He won't just leave his phone dead in the case he's on the field. Particularly when people will be likely to be looking for him. He always leaves his connection open whenever clients or his friends need him. Dak is reliable like that. Why isn't anyone answering? His mobile is in an out-of-range area sounds more plausible, although the father doesn't completely shake off the unease if anything makes it worse. Unlike Rebecca and I, he took the time to listen to what Isabella said, and even if he didn't believe it, he was definitely the first one to offer help or try to do something. If he ends up trouble doing whatever it is, so help me, I'm going to. Well, I can't be rash. I'm aware of that. I'm running the same reminder in my head since last night. But if something happens, I'm certain my reaction won't be pretty. The added guilt from those times I repeatedly dismissed him will surely haunt me. Yo, Zach, call me back, all right? I wanted to check in and, uh... Yeah, just please, call me back. It's usually a joke between us when I say he's the Watson to my Sherlock. I don't see him as some assistant to put aside until he's needed, like some people would believe, though. He's not some pity friend I keep around to make myself look if good. If anything, he's the one who stayed by me out of pity. Zach's the one who puts me up with me most of the time. Even when he doesn't need to. It's not a case of cool cop who helped out a minority. In truth, I was a hard-headed, hot-tempered, and reckless rookie. Up until I met him. It wasn't anything sudden, and some part of me is still that rookie. But I've grown, thanks to him. He tempers that part of me. Considering how our first impressions went, I'm lucky he stuck around. Beck and I may have been spent a lot of years together as children, but Zack? He's... He's probably the closest thing I'll call to a best friend. But it's more than that. A camaraderie that no words can express. He has my back and I always have his. He's a brother I've never had the luck of ever having. Only child and all. And I have every reason to worry about my brother. Becca's neighbor did say she went out to be with someone, no specific names. If I'm wrong and she's not with Professor Clark, maybe it was with Zach. Nope. Not at all. Whoa, it's a big jump right there. They've never been close, but it's not the kind of awkward friendship where meeting together remains out of the question. Regardless, I continue dialing for his phone another three times, like I've done with Becca's. In the end, after the third time of no one answering, I stop and cut the call with a ragged exhale. Waiting game it is, then. I've been trained for those. Hell, I'm used to them. Just... Just not when it comes to people I'm close to. So what happened? Much as I keep reminding myself to maintain a level head, it's a whole different matter when it's someone you know. So what happened, uh... They did an automatic route split. Hmm... Isabella's death has proven that. Personal feelings will likely get involved at some point. It's starting now, actually, with the anxious strings coiling and uncoiling causing a racket inside my stomach. It still annoys me that all I can do right now is grip my teeth and trudge back to Isabella's apartment. Useless. Mudada. That's when I am in the face of this. A man dash around Luxburg and Anselm isn't going to help things. It's not like I'll simply stumble across him on the side of the road during a drive. He'll probably stumble across her body, sadly enough. This is a too big place for one person to go searching for only two people. That'd be like finding a needle in a haystack. Gee, 
We seem to always see the same street whenever we like go to like the downtown area. With one last frustrated glance toward the open skies, I prepare myself for the long wait. I might have already grown used to this. The winning will always, always be the hardest part. More so when it's the people you care about. And sure enough, boredom strikes minutes or later, followed closely by anxiety. I need to be doing something, but what? I've already gone through those papers from the BRC last night. Twice, in fact. I'm still at a dead end. If Rebecca were here. Help Isabella were still here. Unconsciously, my attention drifts towards the closed door of her apartment, and it hits me the second my eyes land on it. A split second of an idea. I didn't bother looking into this when we were here the other day, considering the reason, or even during the investigation. But Cooper died. Isabella would have most likely received all the files from the Urban Guard Mansion. Actually, that's what she was looking at before she got killed. In fact, she might not need to. They are partners, right? It's no longer a training mentor thing. They both likely have the same copies of the documents. She might still be keeping some in her room. Something she hadn't been able to give us because of the tragedy. However, immediately after that thought forms, guilt also rears its head. The fact that I'm faking about breaking to her apartment leaves an uneasy twinge in my stomach. It's wrong. All of it is wrong, and appropriate on so many levels of propriety I adhere to. If she's here, I won't even consider this. Really now. But if she's here, will she allow it? My gaze swivels back to the door. It's as if the thing's inviting me. One thing's for sure, however. Knowing her, she'll do any possible means if it'll save our friends from this curse. She can be stubborn like that sometimes, and it's enough to harden my resolve. So muttering on sound apology to her and swallowing my guilt, I reach up for my body bobby pins, making my work on the lock. And under met the knob click, and I quietly slip into her apartment. Whatever I am to find at the end of this, I hope it will point me in the right direction. Despite all the packing we did the other day, her room's still a mess of things she had accumulated over the years. Papers and some new cups, a few photographs and posters we never got to include in the boxes for shipment. No matter where you look at this, the place simply has Isabella written in it. Since five years since she left this big mark in our lives. I'd be lying if I say her presence didn't change a lot of things. And Zach. And Rebecca. And me. Oh yeah, I changed some things in you. Caused a complicated love triangle that was really anime. However, there's no time to reminisce about all this. As nice and nostalgic those memories are, there's work to do. Things to find, if there's even any in here. I won't know that by simply standing here acting nostalgic. Wasting no time, I head straight for a study table, where a chaos of papers and folders clutter the top. There are instant newel cups still, plus a few empty pens and crumpled paper littering the table. All points of interest in the room, but my focus veers on the laptop first. No malice intended. I'm simply looking for work files. Besides, I doubt she has anything to hide, and... If it still means anything, that's... That's exactly why I'm... Why I... Isabella has always worn her heart on her sleeve. Genuine. Uninhibited. Open. Free. While well, has often gotten into all sorts of trouble, her candidness, that whole hard look she has always displayed and carried with her, are things I'll never have a reason to doubt. I first will say it's her warmth that draws people to her. Or her cheer. Neither are wrong. But neither is the whole truth to her, either. Because those who have never bothered to look beyond the surface will never see it. See her. See someone earnest. Someone who's always meant well, albeit her underlying stubbornness. See how she loves. An affection that's altogether both warm, steadfast, and unflinching. In many ways. For a lot of reasons. She's... She's the kind of person I, I want to be around with. Just say so you love her, Ash. Crush Rebecca's heart for a proxy from a distance. She'll sense it in the force. You never meet any people like that. Not my line of work. Always have something to hide, always something to lie about. Eventually, we meet too many of them, you change too. You become like them. Perhaps the biggest thing I regret about this is... I never had the chance to change that. Before she... The laptop finally boots up and loads the operating system. Although, as soon as it does, I'm greeted by her password screen. For a few minutes, I try my head at a couple of obvious ones she might use. I... Like... Ash... One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, zero, zero. Password one. Qwerty. Admin. Cinnamon rolls. 
None of the works. At least she knows how to use the most common ones. Is that the new layer of problem, though? With knowing her, she must have written it somewhere. Not a mess of papers here, but someplace she can quickly check. It's probably something she'll bring with her, not necessarily a diary, but close to one. I've noticed one on her person several times before. Never saw its contents. I've seen her write regularly on them. While waiting for a meal in the restaurant and doing lulls in a conversation. I just hope she's left where she's written her password somewhere here. It's the drawers I start with from the bottom one. It takes a while going for the pile into the three layers, the bomb to yielding nothing but old records she's been keeping. The third one, though, yields one closer to what I'm looking for. All pages have already been filled. Are we still in this little branch? There's still a little bit of branching right here. Probably why she dumped it here. Carefully flipping through each reveals notes from a meeting with a client. Sometimes there are duels at the edge of the pages, others take up an entire spread. All old ones, and nothing of use to me right now. But in the last page, on a sheet of folded in half. Open it reveals the duel of the three of us. Zach, Rebecca, and me from how we looked about four or five years ago, give or take. Does, does Ash have antennas? Eat, noodle, sleep. At the bomb, the words scrawled in a neat script after a few telling erasures. 707 Devil and 211. Despite myself and how dismal everything going on at present, a laughter slips from my lips, uninhibited and without care for who might hear. 707 Devil in Court. I remember handling that case from five years ago. Then we got a recommendation from Inspector Abigail and our promotion to Detective Sergeant after wrapping it up. It's a morbid case of a dead husband being stuffed in a sofa by his own wife at the heart of it. Isabella. Fresh off the boat, selling the first property assigned to her. Damn, Isabella, really? Some sixth sense of humor the universe must have, huh? Though in hindsight, if all that shit didn't happen, the four of us won't even be together. That's a nice way to, like, think about how you met. Oh yeah, remember that time you guys met? Remember when we found the body in the sofa? Fond memories! I wouldn't have met her. In the end, I can't even tell her. Instead, choosing to hide behind teasing words and friendly jibes because I'm a coward who can't even convey his feelings properly. Who can't even face the person he's become. Now there's only regret. Patch, a gun, and I can't even protect my own friends. To other people, these may just be a series of letters. But to us, to the people pictured on this page, they mean a whole different thing. Apparently it also means a great deal to her. One sentiment that goes far beyond some sense of nostalgia. Enough to also use it as a password for her own laptop. True enough, it works, and as soon as I have access to all of our work files, nothing significant, though. Nothing I haven't already found last night. Perhaps the most noteworthy of everything is the log she's left. The night she... that night. She has taken note of every client who attended the open house and worked on the mansion, even the outside contractors. Though for what purpose, I have no idea. Should I have also looked into those last night? Yes. They didn't seem that important, though. If anything, I'll get more looking to the deaths of those employees than some random people. Any of these clients in my list will only broaden my scope. But what if... What if Isabella's onto something here like with the letter? Shite. There's no more room for regret, however. Ash from the oh City. god. Bag All of a sudden, my ringtone breaks the moment and my me. attention shifts towards the source. Better not lie. Before I can even wall in my mistakes, I hastily put everything guy. back together. Sup Turn off Isabella's Ash laptop and leave the room City. to answer the phone. Hopefully there'll be some good news this time. No. Unrelated frustrations aside, once I step out of the room and accept the call, the stone that's been stuck in my stomach simultaneously launches itself off my throat. The person on the other side of the line isn't who I'm expecting. Hey, that's right, right? It's Officer Rains from about the precinct. You know, you have bring me donuts to keep an eye out for you and shit. Oh, yeah, right. Rens, what's up? Good thing I thought it was Rebecca at first. You've, uh... Never called me through this line before. Is this something urgent? Yeah, kinda. Something came up this morning. You know the big guy? You're a buddy. Zach just get arrested. Oh, Benjamin saw him by here a few days ago. A uh, big guy. Rather six feet tall. Zach? I don't feel too good about this. Yeah, I am. Zachary Steele, I think. What about him? He's been detained. And... Wait, what? What do you mean he's been detained? They brought him in this morning. That's not what I asked. What are the charges? I don't know. Not my division. I'm not really supposed to be on the phone right now, but I thought you want to know. 
Thanks, Officer Renz. I'll get you some more donuts later. Hey, well, I gotta go. If you wanna save this drop by, not sure how that'll work, though. The chief has a standing order not to let you into the precinct until Monday. Y yeah yeah Thanks for the heads up. I'll bring you some coffee to go with those donuts, too, next time. The call ends with a click while I'm left here reeling, staring blankly at my phone. What the hell did you do, Zack? Still no word on Rebecca, either. Looks like a trip to the precinct is in order today. I might as well make sure the big guy is okay. Whatever choice do I have? Sighing, I lock the door to Isabelle's apartment, and within five, I'm on my way to the LPD.